Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, on behalf of the Embassy of Switzerland in the United States, I want to welcome you to the November edition of our Swiss Film Club. Uh, my name is Emily Buss, and I work in the public diplomacy section of the Embassy. This film club was started during this time when we're not able to gather in cinemas together to create moments of shared viewership and to continue introducing our American audiences to excellent Swiss films like the one we watched this month and uh, to support film artists in Switzerland in sharing their work. And I'm delighted today to be joined for this discussion by the film's two directors, Aline Suta and Céline Caridroy, and my colleague in New York, Aita Poult. Uh, she's the head of the culture section at our consulate general there. Um, quick introduction of all of you. Uh, Aline Suta was born in Geneva. She has studied visual arts and cinema studies at universities around Europe and has worked uh, with youth and disabled on video workshops. Uh, she served as a program director for multiple film festivals in Switzerland and in France. And uh, this is her, uh, well, she already did a short film about her connection to the Romanche language, her mother language. And she currently teaches video and sound in Geneva and works as a film director as part of her own production collective, Earthling Productions, with her co-director, Céline Garidra who uh, was born in Paris and graduated from the Department of Visual Communication at Geneva School of Applied Arts. She also holds a master's degree in uh, uh, creative documentary. And she has worked in Belgium and France and Switzerland and currently also is a teacher of cinema and visual art in Geneva and works at Earthling Productions with Aline um, and works to create and promote uh, sound creations. And finally, Aïsa Poult is a native speaker of Romanche from Engadin. Um, she has studied languages, literature, and political science. She previously worked as a news and culture editor and uh, worked as the, at the Swiss Public Broadcaster. Uh, in 2015, she entered the diplomatic service of Switzerland, and after postings in Tunis and Bern, uh, she just arrived in August, this past August, in New York, <laughs> where she is the head of the cultural department there. And she also has two children with whom she speaks Romanche. So uh, I'm hoping that she can provide an extra, um, extra layer of insight and, and context for the film. So uh, this film, I should say, has been screened in uh, festivals around the world and it won a prize at the Trento Film Festival in Italy. But this is its US premiere, is that correct? <laughs> First, <laughs> so we're very excited and hopefully we can welcome you in person one of these days in the future. Um, so I'm very much looking forward to, to asking you questions, to hearing your insight. In the meantime, if any viewers have questions, uh, please go ahead and pose them either in the chat or you can click the ask a question uh, button at the bottom of your screen. But I want to stop talking and hear from you now, so let's get started. Um, for Aline and Céline, what was the inspiration for creating this film and how long did it take you to put it together? Okay, can we begin? Uh, okay, okay, I'll start. Part? Well, the inspiration, they were, they were a lot like from all the films, but um, actually the one that we often talk about is that my older brother, I have two brothers, one actually living in New York, the other one living in Switzerland, but my older brother uh, got married with a, a Chinese uh, woman and uh, they had a baby girl and that was already 14 years ago. And then my sister-in-law began talking Chinese with this baby girl and my brother, uh, who has a really strong connection with um, his Roman identity, started talking Roman to her. So um, we just were wondering, Celine and I, what what this would be changing for this child as she would be growing up to have these um, two identities one of the languages that is all spoken in the world and one of the tiniest languages in the world so we were really wondering what does it make in one person's character what does it change how will you uh, change maybe your view over the world uh, speaking one or the other language and then um, I, I spent a year in Barcelona because I was studying Spanish and the fact that I met there people who, were, who had a really strong connection with the Catalan language made me um, reconsider my own perception with my mother tongue that I never really thought about uh, earlier. So that were two of my, uh, let's say, 
uh, things related with my experience, but then also Celine made a, a, a documentary film before that one that was about her own roots in the north of France and how people were connected with the landscape. So it is kind of a community within with um, what the environment, what it would be changing in one people's identity. And this film was a very uh, like long process to to uh, to finish it because we are like. Um, uh, friend, uh, till we are children, uh, we know each other uh, till we are six years old, and uh, then it was also funny for me uh, as a child to hear romance um, in the house of uh, Aline to realize that uh, yeah, there was like this link of a secret language, and also we were asking ourselves as. Um, as a Swiss people, um, what is the, the Swiss um, identity that is not uh, so easy to describe? We always have to describe uh, what is the particularity, and uh, this language is really like um, like a microcosm of something we can understand of Switzerland. And um, then it was very long. We begin just to go on holidays uh, with the family together and uh, we realized that perhaps we could um, share something of this uh, language uh, and this link Alan uh, has and this um, interest I have for, for landscapes to do a film and also uh, this revelation a bit uh, uh, with uh, these children of the brother Alan. <laughs> then we make the film like it, it, uh, it was like Seven years of uh, processing altogether. Yeah. yeah, perhaps three or four years uh, writing, wow. uh, searching for money, and uh, making um, repérage, uh, and then one year um, of shooting, and then uh, yeah, one year of more or less for, for post production. But none of it was hundred percent except no. the shooting because we both. Rosalie was actually living in Brussels, so and we both had uh, other jobs uh, when we started. And then just for the post production, it was uh, more like 100%. Uh, huh. And so, how did you choose the individuals to focus on in the film, and how did you find them? Well, we, we began with uh, writing a dossier, what you always have to do when you're looking for money to produce your film. And we were um, we were interested in finding people. Um, who would be living in different parts uh, of the Roman-speaking uh, areas. And also we wanted to find people who had different connections with the language. So we had this idea from the very beginning that we wanted to have a child in the film because we were interested in um, having a character who would be kind of naive about um, his relationship with the language, which is more or less the case at the end. But, uh, and then we went for a couple of weeks on what you call repérage. Um, we, we went to travel in uh, Haubünden. I don't know how we call it in English. In Graubünden, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and we had uh, many people that we wanted to meet that um, we had been uh, hearing of. Or, and it's, 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 it's a big landscape, but a small world. So everyone knows everyone pretty much, even if uh, the distances are quite uh, big. And um, Gisula, who is the this Swiss German woman who lives in Graubünden, is pretty well known there. And so is Jury, the, the poet. So we kind of quickly ran into them. And we met a lot of people. And we decided we chose those four or five characters if, with the children uh, for um, the reasons that they were um, complementary and also because we had a strong human connection with them. Yeah. No, it's, uh, <laughs> you said everything. Great. Well, Aita, I'd like to bring you in now as a native speaker of Vermont and someone who grew up in the region. Um, what was your reaction to the film? Uh, how did some of these people differ from your experience? Uh, well, yeah, I mean, my initial reaction was 
uh, I had to laugh. I mean, I thought it was funny. <laughs> I was really, I mean, I was wondering how you managed to find these some really original originals. I mean, especially this old man. Uh, he made me laugh a lot. Um, and I, <laughs> so this whole mix was uh, for me quite uh, quite entertaining. I mean, I have to say, I uh, the kids, of course, they were cute. I can I can totally relate to. I see my. I mean, they were speaking another Romance than I than I spo speak because I'm they're from another region. But this is very yes um, typical. But the old man, <laughs> I found him very very um, yeah. Like he also said of himself, he's an extremist. So. Um, Yes, you know, um, it was a bit, for me, it was a bit, yeah, I didn't really relate to anything that he said. Um, and uh, I don't think my grandmother, for example, would have either because it's a very, very specific um, case, I think. Um, and then, but what you just said, it's a small world. And so, of course, one of, of these four or five characters, I happen to know someone personally. <laughs> That's no big surprise there. Anina Sedlacek. Uh, yes. Uh, yes. The, the, yes. So um, I think what really differs um, me, my experience uh, from their experience is that I am. I mean, I'm part of one of uh, of these forty percent. Actually, there's forty percent of Romans who don't speak, uh, who don't live in in Canton Graubünden. Um, they live um, mostly in Zurich, but also in New York, <laughs> somewhere else, because. Um, yeah, and that is very typical also for our culture and our and our language. That uh, already many 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 years ago we had to we had to leave. Um, all my people had to leave, of course, to to work elsewhere, and they went to Italy. And that's also why you found why you found found communities of uh, Romance a bit everywhere. And uh, yeah, so I think that's very very um, of these four or five uh, people that you interviewed. Um, they are. Um, all in the, I mean, they speak different Romans, but they are all in, in still in the traditional um, area where, where, where Romans is spoken. And uh, more and more people are actually um, not, yes. No. It's interesting well, that you found Jury, um, that, that what he said uh, made, made you laugh because you're one of the very few people who can understand from the inside his poetry because everyone else yeah. has, has to read the tra translation, which is, of course, Maybe not funny. Yes. <laughs> well, maybe funny, but not as funny, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. No. He he was very. Um. I mean, very love loving, but it was very. I mean, of course, it's very. Um. How do I say this? I think also. Um. Now, um, my generation. Um, would 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 not would not say something like this anymore. Um. But he also seemed like a person who also lives quite isolated. So, of course, what, he doesn't what, uh, understand. Uh, what is also important, perhaps, with this uh, character is um, what Alin says before about the landscape, the link with the landscape. And um, Jerry has something really strong with that, like link with his uh, 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 walking barefoot and uh, making hunt barefoot. Yeah. He's really a, a, an original, but he has like this sort of um, wildness also that could be related to the to, to the, yeah to the landscapes in in Graubünden. Great. Well, thank you. It seems you know through this film and through what you're all saying that Romansh is so much more than just a language. It's an identity and it's a way of life. And I wonder if you can all just speak for you personally. Um, what uh, is the, in your view, is the place of Romanche in Swiss society and culture and beyond? And uh, maybe start with Aline. Okay. Um, for me, it's quite special because um, I'm the second generation who has been learning Romanche, but outside of the um, Romanche country, so to say. Okay. So mm -hmm. my link to Romanche, that was, that was not the question. The question was, uh, what is it in Switzerland or? Sorry. Yeah, how do you view it as a contribution to Swiss society and Swiss culture? Yeah, uh, yeah. so my point was that it is hard to say for me because since my own position is really special, not typical, um, I don't really know. It's really hard to say. I think it's really part of the Swiss identity and it is important that... And people are really... really um, they, they like it, even if they have never heard it. Most of the people... In, who are in Geneva where we live have never heard Romance. Uh, 
with anyone speaking Roman, but still they like it. They like the idea of this, um, I think, of this uh, small, uh, tiny language. But I don't know, I don't think I can really, uh, um, I, I don't have a, a really right overview about the, the topic. Okay. Oh, but uh, maybe Aita, you can weigh in a bit more on that. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, I think it depends a lot um, um, where in Switzerland. Um, as you say, I think Geneva, I mean, it's also geographically the most far away from, from us. So uh, that's no coincidence. And I also experienced this living in Lausanne, and there is a very 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 few knowledge about about romance i mean if you're lucky uh, people know that it's it's a national language but that's that's about it huh? they have never met someone who speaks romance and they have never been even in canton grabünden maybe that now with covid has changed a bit instead of going to the south of france they're going now uh, to to our camp so that's at least what i heard but um when you come to the to the German, Swiss German speaking parts, especially Zurich, they know it very very well because um, they often go on vacation uh, to go, to to Canton Graubünden, and then of course to the most the most beautiful parts of our Canton are where we speak Romansch, that's where the holiday uh, regions are. That's just a fact. Huh? And um, so they know it, and they know people in Zurich uh, as well, and um, in Bern as well. I mean, that was not a that was not a exotic, Romance is less exotic, for example, than, um, than in, in, in the French-speaking part of Switzerland. And the same for, for the Italian-speaking, where they, it's just the two minorities, so they, they are very close and, and, and they know Romance and they, yeah, because it's also quite, quite close to the, to the Tessin, uh, Ticino dialect, actually. So, um, so yes, but I, I mean, of course, the, the, the place of, of, of romance in the, society, in, in the Swiss society is a bit, uh, as a bit was what you said, Aline, the people, people like it. Um, but I think there's also, I mean, there is a, also a danger in this, you know. And I also always, I always really uh, say um, we are not the pet of the nation, you know. Uh, because we're often treated this way, you know, it's this, this folkloristic uh, thing that's going around and it's nice to, you know, to you know, put it in our, as our in our uh, identity card. Switzerland is so diverse, and we treat this really small minority really, really nice. And then, and so this is a bit the danger, you know, with with this with this sympathy because there is a lot of sympathy, but it doesn't really go very very far. You know, there is not enough. It's sympathy, but there's not enough interest, I would say, um, for people, you know, to even want to. To just just you know learn a bit more about the language, not even learn the language, but but really what, what is it? How how is it? How is it endangered? What what could they do? I mean, there, I think there's so many things that 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 someone in Geneva could also do to you know to promote a bit romance and to to support us as well. Um, what, so um, what you say is is very interesting, and uh, actually in our production history, we really we were facing this problem because. Um, we first uh, approached the uh, uh, French-speaking Swiss television, and mm -hmm. uh, uh, we submitted our our project. And I said, but no one would be interested in this film. There is no way yeah. we. we yeah. And well, we were lucky because at the end, when the film was finished, and when we found other funds and maybe our own funds, they uh, they were part of it also. But yeah. only when the film was finished, and first the first reaction was no interest yeah. for. For, for this and that yeah that's also what i what i experience a lot is really a certain arrogance yes there's initial sympathy but then there's a lot of arrogance ignorance but also arrogance um for example i also um, i can i can say you know, emily you noticed uh, what i what i just told you about this i wanted to introduce or start a, a, a romance week um to um, in, in in our um, embassies abroad because they promote our national languages we have uh, you know specific events for the italian language every year for the french language but there is nothing uh, existed yet for for romance and of course that, that bothers me a lot and it's also against our <laughs> constitutional rights you know so it's actually our job to also promote romance so this is what i'm going to start now and um and but i also had to you know fight for it and make the case also like within our own department why this why this is important and why uh, why it matters actually um so I can. I, I mean, this doesn't surprise me at all. What you just, what you just said. Yeah. And then, was, yeah. No, it was important for us to to have this um, as a, a French uh, speaker, uh, French speaker of the part, 
French speaker part of uh, Switzerland, Switzerland. Uh, we can make uh, like a bridge uh, between this French part and the Romance part and uh, that is a bit uh, rare and we say okay we have to do it also because uh, we wanted to that people know Romance in our own country but also that perhaps um, this uh, position in the country could help us to also promote it uh, abroad the, the frontier of the of the of this country. Mm -hmm. yeah. But this bridge between French and Romance was important for us because, as mm -hmm. you said, in Zurich everybody knew this language, and we were like uh, a bit shocked to realize how how much uh, yeah. how is it possible to be proud of having for national language and to don't know anything about it. Yes. To say like a mm -hmm. uh, folklore thing. Exactly. Mm -hmm. yeah. So uh, we touched on this briefly, but the idea that the Romanche is different with just a uh, five kilometers distance. Um, that I think was surprising yeah. to me and probably to a lot of people. And so, um, especially given how small the, the population of native speakers is. So um, is there a standard Romanche that's used for television and media and federal government? And how can you, you know, it seems in order, in order to promote the language and grow the language, it's difficult if there are so many people who speak such a different way, or, or maybe it's generational. Do you want me, do you want me to, to say something about this? Maybe, yeah, yeah maybe like, you can. Yeah, we can yes. say about... No, no, yeah. it's, it's fine. Yes, of course, language, no. We can say why we would <laughs> talk about it in the yeah. film. Maybe. Yeah, great. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, so no, that's a, that's a whole beauty and tragedy of our language, that we have five different, uh, not only dialects, but they're actually written uh, languages. Also, um, I don't know how you say it in English. Uh, in, in German, it's idiome, idiome, idi idioms. Yeah, so, I mean, that, that, yeah, yeah, it's not a dialect. So that's the thing, because dialects, they don't have, uh, they don't have the, a written language. You know, mm. the Swiss, the Swiss different, Swiss, uh, Swiss German dialects, they don't have the, uh, I mean, you can write it in an SMS, but there is not an official, uh, gra the, uh, because in our five different romans, each one has, has its own grammar is, and there are also dictionaries. So, um, they are really, um, yeah, they're, they're, they're more than dialects. They're written languages and that they are taught at school. They were always taught at school in the, in, 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 in the, in the specific uh, regions with the specific romance. And this is, this started way back actually with the translation of the Bible. Um, the Bible was translated in uh, every uh, dial, as in every idiom of, of romance. So that's why since then we have these five different romance. And that makes it very, very hard to, you know, um, yeah, because we're 60 to 80,000 people speaking it, so uh, split up, um, you know, when oppositions split up, it's never a good, <laughs> you have to unify. And that's the thing that happened with, with Romance, and, and uh, that's also why we're losing uh, more and more um, speakers and more and more also political support. Because there was uh, a big effort done by the Lia Romancia, which is the, the, the cultural organization promoting Romance. In 1982, they developed a written written language, um, a common standard Romance written language, uh, which actually was a very Swiss, you know, a compromise between the five. And they took it took uh, words from each Romance, you know, uh, chair from one Romance and table from another Romance, and put it together. So very, you know, it, but um, yes, um, we are very um, stubborn. <laughs> people from the mountains, uh, unfortunately, most of us. So um, everybody thinks their romance is the most beautiful and the best. And so there was a lot of resistance. Um, and uh, this, to this day, this language is used, um, is used, uh, for example, in the, in the news for, we have, you know, the, uh, S, the, the Swiss national broadcast company is also, you know, in, in every language. So we also have it in Romance. We don't have, we have a TV as a TV station and we have a, a radio, radio station in Romance. So the, the, the news are always, for example, read in, 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 um, in, in Romance Grigion, that's what it was. It's what's it called? The, this national standard language, and also uh, online on the, 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 on the on the on the website, the news or in this in this Romance. 
And then they also tried uh, to introduce it in, in the schools. But as you know, in Switzerland, it's very, very, very federal, as a very, very, very um, yeah, decentralized. And so every, not only every canton, but every, every city, every, every, every village decides uh, which language they want to they wanna teach, in which language they want to teach. So um, in, some, in some villages, it works with Romanche Grijun, and in others, not at all. And they get back to their, um, to the, their Romanche. And um, yeah, that's a bit the, the story behind it. Yeah. And it and would exactly it would it would help you know to you know, of course uh, avoid <laughs> to have someone five kilometers away and not understand uh, what they say. <laughs> but um, yeah. it is uh, I mean this is happens to very uh, to a lot of you know uh, threatened minority languages. At some point point you have to have a common written language, otherwise you won't survive. So uh, now I'm just really I have uh, high hopes for the next generation <laughs> that they that they understand this because I also understand you know our federal govern government and also the canton of Graubünden when at some point they say we cannot translate everything <laughs> in five uh, different uh, romans please uh, choose one and then it's too costly also you know yeah. so Celine and Aline was that something that surprised you maybe when you started working yeah, we, on it? We knew, we, we knew it, of course. We knew it, but I think we understand it uh, meeting the people. Also, um, with Aline, uh, when she comes to the to the shooting and has to speak with the people, uh, first of all, it was really a um, difficult exercise because people do, doesn't want to speak Roman with, with her. They say, you don't speak uh, the same Roman as me. I don't want to speak. And it was uh, a bit difficult, and we understand also um, that it's, it is something uh, a bit, uh, yeah, a bit stubborn, but it's also, emotional, so. yeah, emotional mm -hmm. because of this, this link of you speak romance with your family and when, with the people you already know. If, if you meet, meet somebody and uh, he speaks uh, German with you, even if he speaks quite the same romance, you begin in, in German with these people and then you don't switch to it because it's not somebody from your family, it's not so, somebody from your village, and you don't link the people. Then we understand that a bit, a lot with this, um, yeah, with the, the 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 wave of the of the landscape that uh, also is cl closing a bit the the village, and also the attachment, uh, emotion attachment, and, and family attachment with the the language. But yeah, it's um, we d we doesn't want to speak about this topic. It was really a big deal uh, during the during the shooting and also the editing to say okay, it's really important also to and we we have always to speak about this uh, Roman region uh, unified um, language. Uh, but it was important for for us uh, for this film not to. Um, yeah, it, it was like another topic to speak about this uh, unified uh, romance and uh, too, too, too big deal for, for, for this film. And we, we didn't want the film to become too political, also because it was quite hard for us to know what was our position within this uh, specific topic. So we, we wanted to, the focus to be somewhere else on the language. So it was really uh, something that we chose not to, not to... Contrast. Yeah, we had some, 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 uh, uh, some, um, some people talking about it, but it wasn't in, in the final editing. And also we realized during the screening um, elsewhere from uh, Switzerland, like in Iran or or in Russia, or, or also, um, where was it? Um, in Korea. In Korea, the, that people, no, and also in, in um, uh, we, we showed a film uh, on the um, Spanish TV, uh, <laughs> Catalan uh, Span uh, speaking uh, people. And that what was um, interesting is, uh, as we don't get into this political fight, it was like also um, something new for other minority language to uh, talk about the language uh, only um, by the way of emotion and not fighting for, for the language. And then mm -hmm. we find perhaps uh, for this film it's much better to, to um, stay in this area. 
Interesting. Well, uh, and Aline, I was uh, really interested to hear sort of about the Ramanche diaspora. Um, I know Aita, you mentioned there are lots of people in Zurich who, who come from Graubünden and speak it, but Aline, to grow up, you said as a second generation, what, um, did you encounter a lot of other people who were in the same situation or is there, what are the tools that, that people use to sort of keep the Romanche identity and language alive in, in subsequent generations outside of Graubünden? Well, I find it personally really difficult. Uh, so my tool was to make this feel somehow. So it reconnected me. And actually, I, I was a, foreign, a foreigner in, in Graubünden. I, I knew nothing else than my grandma's village. I had never been anywhere else. So I discovered Graubünden with Celine together. We, we both had new eyes on the on these people and also somehow on the language, but I had this key that made me enter in some places where I couldn't have entered without the language. Mm. But yes, as you said, Aita, it's really, when you live in Geneva, speaking Romance makes you very exotic and it's uh, really cool. So yeah. <laughs> when you go like, I speak Romance, it's even better than if you speak Chinese. It's something yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Wow. So I, I realized that uh, very quickly as a child that um, people were impressed when I said that. And it, well, with my two brothers, it always was this secret language we could yeah. speak and no one else would understand. But now to make it live, after me, it's really difficult. I have actually three children and um, I, really, I would really love them to speak Romansh, but it's really hard for me to transmit the language to them because it's kind of too far away for me. Mm -hmm. But thanks to my mother, <laughs> they still understand it because she keeps speaking Romansh with them. So mm -hmm. they don't That's really great. speak it, they, um, but they understand it pretty well. So I'm really <laughs> grateful. <laughs> Yeah. But well, my, my, my brother made it, so he, he's maybe more stubborn than I am. He's, he managed to speak English with his two daughters, uh, English, wow. sorry, uh, Romansh. <laughs> and Aita, you speak Romansh with your children, right? Is yes, it I do. Difficult to, is it difficult to find tools to help them, or do you just, how do you manage that? Well, I mean, it will get, it will start to get difficult now, but until now, uh, in Switzerland, it was very, very easy because my mother came a lot to Bern and uh, my father. And so actually, Romansh was my first son. He's almost four. It's his strongest language. Uh, it's where he has the most vocabulary. And um, now here, I mean, I, um, I work now full time. So he's with my husband most of the time who speaks French. He goes to a bilingual English French school. Um, and yes, now I started to have, you know, this kind of, uh, he wants to play and, and all of a sudden he speaks French to me and I was like, I don't understand French, you have to speak Romance. And, and now I, you know, uh, Trick 77, I use uh, the RTR, so the Swiss National Broadcast um, website. They have for kids quite a bit of cartoons. Oh, me too. Uh, yes, yeah, and in all five. <laughs> You okay. can choose your romance. I mean, they do it, uh, yes. And so they have um, different cartoons there, and um, uh, he, he watches that. And um, and recently, I, I chose the, the wrong one. And then after like 10 minutes, I said, yeah, I don't think this is the right romance, Mama. And, then, <laughs> and I said, oh, yeah, no, I, I put the wrong one. And he said, that's okay, it's okay, I understand. It. It's like, oh, I'm, I'm so stupid. I mean, I should just, you know, challenge him a bit on that. But I, I thought maybe it's a bit too much, you know, with New York and English and French, it just one romance would be already great. <laughs> but yes, I mean, uh, uh, hopeful, uh, so thankfully that exists. Um, and then read books every night, yes, in romance. And I mean, for me, it's, it's, it's very my mother tongue, so I will never speak anything else to him it's uh, it's out of the question but i'm very curious now also how the second one turns out second experiment because he will uh, you know uh, be uh, here in new york his first four years with only me who speaks from lunch to him so his vocabulary will most likely be uh, less uh, less rich although it's interesting go ahead actually my uh, elder child who is now uh, almost eight he, he starts to realize that it makes him cool and special that when he says that they read romance in the family. So I think it will motivate him a lot to. Uh, yeah. To do they have uh, do they have romance names? No. No, they have um, my one of my daughter has a second romance name, Anna, but uh, no, they have a French mm -hmm. name. 
Well, was, that's a good transition to my next question. You've sort of addressed some of it, but um, it was interesting to me in the film, someone mentioned that children in uh, Roman speaking areas learn German earlier now because they have access to television and other media. But it, you know, it sounds like it could also work the other way. You know, if there's this Roman uh, television, news, cartoons, books, is that you know how how can that help promote the growth maybe outside of Graubünden? Oh, it's I think it's super super important. I mean, and this is also why the Romance, the organization I, I mentioned um, before, um, they produce a lot of uh, of these cartoons actually, um, and they finance them together with the uh, with the Swiss Broadcasting uh, um, yeah. service, <laughs> the TV TV. No, I think it's it's um, I mean. Without it, there is there is no chance. Um, what's happening now also um, with the support from the federal government is they because they realized that most um, uh, almost forty percent of the Roman speaking actually outside of Graubünden, that they now um, will offer um, like a daycare in Romansh and other um, um, language courses. Uh, and I mean, there also there's, there's that, that exists already in uh, in in Zurich, and so. Uh, and maybe in, probably in Geneva, not yet. But um, that is a—I mean—that that would be a good option in, in Zurich. It's a once a week, one, one afternoon, um, when you can send your kid um, to a romance speaking kita. Yeah, depending on the romance of the daycare <laughs> person. <laughs> but uh, yeah, uh, so these these things really help. But our, again, I mean, cannot stress enough the importance of of, of the internet. But I think it's pretty new because. A couple yeah, of years ago, I asked uh, about uh, Roman cartoons, and they told me there wasn't. But they oh were, no, there are. But it was a few years ago, so I'm happy yeah. that there are. Yes, great. Um, so I uh, have just a couple more questions and um, want to remind viewers, if you have uh, a question, to please enter it in the chat or in the ask a question button. Um, but so for each of you personally, whether or not you grew up speaking Romansh, what um, is the, you know, why is this area and this, this language, this identity so special to you personally? Um, maybe, uh, Aline, we can start with you and go to Celine and then Aita. Why, it, why did this landscape, this place is special for me? That's the language. The language. Yeah, the, the language, the landscape, you know, everything. What, what makes it special? Maybe for people who might not be familiar with it. I'm sorry, but again, I will go personal and not uh, in general about Roman. But for me, this, this language is really special because it is my family's language. But really, my family's language in this uh, very tiny sense, because we speak a Roman from a specific village. And I always only spoke it with my family. And I still speak it with my grandmother. She's my, uh, I train a lot with her. Because I often answer in French with my mother, which is not very clever. But with my grandma, I still uh, stick to Romansh. So for me, it is a family language. And when we went there together with Celine, it was really special for me to speak this really intimate language with people I didn't know. And it was a special, not always very comfortable experience, but very uh, strong experience. And it, may, it, connect, it connects me directly, really strongly people, especially when it's the same romance. And then, I don't know about the landscape, it's, uh, it's maybe one of my favorite landscapes in the world, This uh, the mountain landscape in general, and it, it's a really amazing mountain landscape. So I really, now I do really link the landscape to the language, which I didn't really before. Great. And Celine, how about you? Um, and that, um, for me, as I said before, it helps me to understand something of my own identity. Uh, even if I'm not coming from uh, Rindon and I don't speak Romansh, uh, I have a, a father who is French and a mother who is uh, Swiss German. And my, uh, my mother never speaks uh, Swiss German to me because she didn't like uh, her own uh, language. Uh, then and I, and I can understand it was also a, a time, uh, this time we said, okay, perhaps it's not good to speak two languages to children. And uh, that's also fashion. We, we said sometimes we said it's not good and now it's good. And it also can change. 
And uh, when we go to, I, I didn't expect it, this uh, reaction of really understanding something of my own country, as I said, a country um, that is really hard to understand, uh, to describe the, the identity is everything and, and nothing and not so, so proud also or, or not like other countries. And then it was really uh, difficult for me to define identity more than French identity or, or Bel Belgian identity. Uh, Switzerland was always uh, something like mysterious for, for me. And really uh, the romance part of Switzerland helped me to understand something of, of Switzerland. Like, uh, as I say, something really related to the landscape, really related to, to the nature. And also something, um, as I, I could say, about uh, using how you use the money. It's also, uh, we can speak about uh, Switzerland uh, also on this way, uh, like romance can also exist and all the identity can also exist because the govern government um, put ha has the money to, to um, entretenir to um, to uh, sustain the um, the culture and uh, that was also something i didn't realize so much before i i yeah i was interested by by the romance mm -hmm. and then um, yeah help me understand um, myself oh. and Aita, how about you what, what is, if you had if you had to to explain to someone maybe who's not familiar what is so special about Graubünden and the Romansch language and identity what would you say for you personally or generally well for me it's just my mother tongue you know <laughs> it's it's not that special for me at all actually I mean my both my parents speak Romansch it was my I grew up in a, in, a, in the in the um, um, lower Engadin where um, where Romansch is really quite strong I mean of course with German as well but um cannot compare to other parts uh, of, of the Canton Grabünden where it's, I mean, it's still very well, uh, spoken a lot. But for me, it's uh, especially, uh, for me, it's just a huge advantage actually now of, of uh, professionally as, um, as well. I mean, uh, I get, I got to do, to work at the Swiss National Broadcast uh, as a journalist. Um, there was large part due to the fact that I was speaking Romance. Of course, they were looking for uh, journalists who, who speak Romance and also other languages. And I checked that box. And I mean, now at the department as a diplomat, I mean, <laughs> it's, uh, I mean, I, I get to, I got to meet the, um, our, our, our foreign minister and write speeches for him. I mean, that would have not have happened so soon in my career uh, if I wouldn't have uh, been a uh, Romance, because of course, as you said, that makes me very special and very <laughs> interesting. And uh, of course, they want to, I, I can give, provide insights on, 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 on this uh, because politically it's, it, it, it's important. So um, for me, it's, uh, it, it's, it's, a, it's an advantage, but it's, uh, It's not that special. I don't know how to say it's. It's just for me. It's. I mean, I I, I listen to quite a bit of Romance music. I read books in Romance, so it's not. Um, it's just my mother tongue. Yeah. 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 Great. Well, um, I just have one final question um, for Celine and Aline. What are you working on now, or what what project will we see next from from you, either individually or together? <laughs> Yeah, we, we are writing a film uh, again together now. We are just uh, beginning of making it. Uh, it's a bit perhaps soon to tell about, but it's a portrait of a, a young woman who was a man before. And it's something about transformation um, with, with the, the help of costumes, how you can become yourself. Uh, in being uh, someone else uh, with costumes and it's a bit like ex more experimental um, form of um, film yeah. yeah actually uh, there is again a connection with uh, identity somehow but yes we i think you said quite a lot but it's actually it's how in her case, how costumes can help you become yourself, maybe not someone else, but in general, how you can use costumes to change your identity in a positive way. So that's um, 
and it's re it will be probably um, a short film. And as Celine said, we want to try some experimental um, uh, in the, in writing, but also in the way of filming and in the sound recording. So, yeah. Great. Well, we look forward to seeing that. And as I said, hopefully um, one day you can come to the US and show your films here and, and speak about them as well. But um, in the meantime, I want to thank all of you, um, Serene and Aline, for sharing your stories and the film, and Aita for sharing your perspective and your background. Um, and I know that uh, with you in New York, hopefully we'll be working a lot more on Romanche uh, language and culture. So I look forward to that. And um, to all the viewers and everyone who registered, thank you so much on behalf of the Embassy of Switzerland. Um, for participating in the film club and uh, we're planning uh, for next month's installment and for our other cultural programs. So you can stay tuned to our social media account. It's at Swiss Embassy USA or our newsletter for more information. And then you can also follow the Consulate General in New York uh, social media and, and cultural newsletter for information there. Um, but thank you all so much for taking the time and uh, I wish you a wonderful rest of your day and a nice weekend. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye.